Kioran, everyone. So lovely to see you all. And thank you, uh, Pip, Mala, and Robin for giving me this opportunity to come and share uh, this Mahi at this platform. I'm Renu Sikka, and uh, as Mala said, I'm uh, one of the Kaihato Mara Kanga curriculum leads at the Ministry of Education. I'm based at Mount Eden office in Tamaki Mukur, in Mangapha. I'd actually like to start our session with the Karakia. And it's a beautiful Karakia. It's Unungia Tepo Tepo Firimaram. Tomokia Te Ao Te Ao Patitangata. Tatai Kirunga Tatai Kiraro. Tatai Ahura. Umie Hui. Now, what this means is, uh, as you can see from the confusion, comes understanding. From understanding comes unity. We are interwoven, we are interconnected, we are interwoven, we are interconnected together as one. Okay. So, I thought I'll just start with a little Fakafananga Tanga and just a little bit about myself. And that's a Cook Island week. I think it's the last day for the Cook Island week. So, happy Cook Island week to everyone. Kirana, Sastri Kal, and Punjabi. And to celebrate Kokalan week, I thought, what better than having this, uh, the theme as a fakato, you know? Um, Connect me to the soils of my ancestors. And it's a beautiful, beautiful theme, you know, which what it means is to acknowledge our elders who are fundamental to the teaching and sharing of languages. And also as Kayako, being mindful of how we identify, how we um, acknowledge and affirm the identity, the language and the cultures of Atamariki and Kayako within our own classrooms and allowing the cultures to enter in that, into our classroom. And I guess it's about embracing all the language weeks and ensuring that Atamariki are connected to their homeland through their identity, language, and culture. So it's beautiful celebrating all these language weeks. Today I'm going to just talk a little bit about maths and art because children love arts. I have been at ministry just fairly new. I'm just completed one year. I've completed. I'm fresh from the sector. Um, I've been teaching uh, for the past 20 years and have held various leadership roles as well across Tamaki Makoro. And children love art, you know. So I'm just going to talk to you about how to integrate maths and art. How do they mix? What is maths? So maths is usually thought of as being something where there is a right and a wrong answer. So what is art? So art is usually thought of as being something that is all down to creativity, where you can't go wrong. There's no right and wrong in art. It's just being creative. So how on earth can art and maths be linked together? So that's what we're going to just explore a little bit in this session. To start with, the answer is this man, Romero Brito, and many other artists as well. So what I want you to do is have a look at this using your math size, have a look at this uh, Romero Brito art form, which is, he's a, Romero Brito happens to be a Brazilian artist, and he uses a lot of bold colors um, to play with. So I want you to just have a look at this art form. And what using your math size, what exactly can you see in this art form? So I'm gonna just make it a little bit. So take a minute and write your answers. Feel free to write your answers in the chat. Using your math's eyes, what can you see in this art form? So you can drop your answers in the chat. Beautiful. So yes, we can see a lot of geometrical patterns. We can see shapes, we can see lines. Beautiful, thank you. What I would like to talk to you about is how do we integrate the key competencies? When we talk about the um, key competencies here, 
I think the key competency is they actually offer an alternate way of viewing our curriculum. And they integrate all aspects of our learning, of our skills, values, attitudes, and our knowledge. So when you're integrating art form with maths, there's some of the key competencies here for children are thinking. They can learn the new vocabulary and the new words, how to use the language, symbols, and maths, and text, how to interpret images, communicate information to others, identifying, as somebody said in the chat, fractions, identifying the halves and the quarters, managing self, children are doing art in, uh, when they are doing artwork. I, I've seen it from my own firsthand experience as a teacher, and I know most of you as Kayoko would see that in your classrooms as well, that when children are doing artwork, they're so engaged. And it's about being a good team member, making good choices, and how can they participate and contribute to the class discussion while they're creating this piece of art. So key competencies are I think in arts, we have four disciplines of arts. We have dance, drama, music, and visual art. And key competencies, I think, need to be partnered within this art and if you want to integrate maths and art. Um, so we're going to move on. Let's, let's look at the curriculum uh, links. How does um, this art and maths integration link to the curriculum? Let's make some links to the curriculum. So if you're looking at Romero Brito art form, um, it's about level one of the curriculum, developing the practical knowledge. That is where children are exploring a variety of materials and tools and discovering the elements and selected principles. Within English curriculum, um, they are acquiring and beginning to use the sources of information, processes, and strategies to identify, form, and express ideas. And when it comes to maths, it's number and algebra patterns, which some of you have already answered in the chat as well, looking at the patterns and algebra, which is creating and continuing sequential patterns. That's uh, within the level one of the curriculum. I just want you to take a minute and have a think about when you look at this Romero Brito art form, what do you think some of the prior knowledge children need to bring with them for this particular mind? What are some of the prior knowledge that Atamariki need to be able to engage with this um, art and maths? And we're looking at Romero Brito art. So what prior knowledge do you think children might need? Just take a minute and you can drop your answers in the chat. Thank you. Any, any teaching lessons or sessions we do in the classrooms, children always bring their prior, prior knowledge and we need to acknowledge their prior knowledge. So in this particular context, what do you think, what prior knowledge are Kamariki bringing with them? So what, sorry, I can't hear you. What prior knowledge do our kids need to bring within this context um, to engage with this session? Beautiful understanding of symbols and colors, yes, shapes. Okay, so let's look at some of these. Uh, and most of you have given those answers that they need to bring the knowledge of shapes and color. So learners are able to identify simple 2D shapes like triangle, square, circle, and rectangle. Learners can experiment with colors and place them into categories of warm and cool colors. Learners are able to identify a simple pattern of color, shape, and size. So these are some of the prior knowledge that children need to bring with them when they're engaging with this. Um, I want you to know, we're going to look at another artist, Mondrian, he's a Dutch artist. And Mondrian, um, yeah, again, he uses colors, but he uses specific colors and mostly lines and shapes. So looking at this math and Mondrian art form, Pete Mondrian, have a look at this art form. These are all some of the Pete Mondrian art forms. Any guesses so far what colors Pete Mondrian liked us like to use in his artwork? Mm -hmm. 
Sorry, any guesses so far what colors Pete Mondrian like to use in his artwork? So yeah, you guess it right, it's red, yellow, and blue. Now what I want you to do is, using your math size again, what can you see in Mondrian's art form? So take a minute and you might want to drop your um, ideas in the chat. So Mondrian's, you got it right, Mondrian's art is basically based on, um, he uses a lot of, lots of rectangles and squares. Let's see some connections and make some links to our curriculum. So when we're looking at Mondrian art, we're looking at measurement and shapes, and we're moving to level two. So we are looking at how to create and use appropriate units and devices to measure length, area, and perimeter of a shape. So we're looking at, you know, when children are drawing the lines, the vertical lines, the horizontal lines, the different shapes, they're learning how to use a ruler. They're learning about different um, units of uh, length and area and perimeter, millimeters, centimeters, all that. And within the shapes, they are learning about how to sort out the objects by spatial features. Uh, learning about two and three uh, D dimensional shapes and learning about the various attributes of the shapes in the language. When you move on to level three and four of the curriculum within the visual arts, some of the practical knowledge that students can learn are they will learn to generate and develop visual ideas in response to a variety of motivation, imagination, or looking at an artist's work or any art form. Moving ahead to level three and four within the English curriculum, they're trying to integrate um, sources of information and processes and strategies and with developing confidence to identify form and express ideas. And then again with squares and rectangles, they're also learning about area and how to find an area and perimeter of rectangle. Now these, these are some of the K. George inspired art form from Mondrian, we are moving to K. George. Now K. George is our very homegrown artist. Um, she's based in Rarotonga. And um, she has done a lot of work around, she basically deals with textiles and fabric. And from there, she has some of this artwork has been inspired by K. George. And she works with nature, basically. So one of her art form, which was inspired by K. George is called Rock Pools and the Sea in 1998. What I want you to do is have a look at this K. George Rock Pools and the Sea art form and see what is the first thing that you notice about Rock Pools and the Sea and why. You might want to um, write your answers in the chat. Oh, she's lovely, K. George is lovely. If you happen to go to Rarotonga, definitely. I love her sarongs, her sarongs are beautiful. Yeah, she, K. George always works with um, nature. Beautiful, thank you. I want you to have a think about what are some of the dominant shapes and colors in this art form, in K. George's art. I mean, I'm using the word dominant, but what shapes can you see? And what colors can you see? repeating patterns, good. Mm 
Nice. Triangles, curves, curvy lines, yes. Beautiful. Thank you. Moving on to some of the next steps, um, um, when you're using integrating art and maths, what are some of the next? And we've, we've looked at Romero Vito, we've looked at K. George, we've looked at Mondrian art form. When you take this to your classrooms, what are some of the next steps that you might want to do? So at level one, what you could do is you could identify an objective weight from using these shapes, um, identifying the shapes or go on a shape hunt. And when it comes to moving to curriculum levels two, three, and four, children could actually create their own sequential patterns using halves and quarters. They could create their own Romero Brito inspired artwork. And I will show you in a, uh, in a minute about um, some of the artwork that was created in my classroom by some of the kids. And it's about bringing the culture into your classroom and looking at various cultural artists. And I had a lovely Brazilian child where we looked at Romero Brito and he loved it. So describing parts of an image and identifying the whole process. It's about estimating the amount of area covered. You could look at conversions at a higher level at level four. Um, how do you convert fractions into percentages? You could look at ratio and proportions. What part of that particular image has is, um, what percentage of that particular image is colored blue or red? You could look at problem solving skills. You could look at investigating different ways of calculating the answers. So there's lots you can, you know, you can take it. There's a progression in this, you know, and um, you, can, you can easily adapt it. You can easily differentiate from your level one. It can go to level five, from level one to level five. So this is some of the artwork examples from my own classroom that children did. So I had a few images I thought I'll share with you. This was inspired by Romero Brito's um, art um, and a um, lot of colors and children then with their own patterns. This particular image was inspired by Mondrian art form. When you start teaching this topic, actually what you could do is you could explore this topic by integrated uh, reading into it. So I always bring in a lot of uh, storybooks into my maths as well. So there's a beautiful book called Lines That Wiggle and Perfect Spare. These are beautiful books. And you can always um, share these stories and then you know, it's about integrating across the curriculum. So you can share these stories and to motivate the kids to start this topic by exploring the 2D shapes, their properties and uh, some of the mathematical language that goes with it. So it can be integrated across the curriculum. And there is actually a progression from the way, um, there's actually a progression from the way students think about this art form, just more than the art form in terms of maths. So as I said, it can go from level one to level five. Also, when you're engaging with um, this Mahi in your classrooms also uh, with the new uh, numeracy and literacy, uh, literacy and communication and numeracy guidelines that's coming in, don't forget to um, also include the process ideas strand where you are actually um, kind of laying the future foundations uh, where learners can formulate the mathematical ideas and explain their thinking, uh, mathematical thinking behind and the reason behind uh, all this work, what they're doing. So, any questions? Sorry, I'm, I think that session went a bit fast, but any questions, any part at this stage? Feel free to write your questions in the chat. Yeah, actually, it links very yes, well to the digital learning outcomes as well. And a lot of digital, um, yeah, if you look at the digital technology curriculum, it definitely has got uh, a link to a lot of digital learning outcomes, DLOs as well. Yeah. Hmm. Nice. 
So I've just got a question. So yeah. do you define your lesson around um, one of these artists and um, and it would be like a theme where you're developing the maths and making the connections? So it's yes. uh, you'll have your learning unit like based on that and, and yes, would yeah. create then their artwork and kind of talk about it? Yeah, that's what exactly. So we just creating a unit around that. So what we did, we used to do was every turn, just pick up an artist, you know, and from different cultures, of course. And as I said, you know, I had 24 ethnicities in my classroom. So I made sure that you know, somehow bring in the language, culture, and identity. And um, so we picked up this Brazilian artist, Romero. And that whole term, we just looked around that, you know, how we can incorporate into other curriculum areas as well, you know, not maths alone, of course, but this is a math session, so bring in. So you're right in saying that, pick up an artist, create a unit around that art form, and how do you integrate maths within that, you know? And then reading and writing, it goes beautifully, you know, we read the stories. So like, take your time and just motivate them, you know, and it flows well. Because our children love it, they're so engaged. They are so engaged. So were the students and um, kind of surprised when they discovered the maths and the art? Like They were actually, especially when it comes to why I also wanted to pick up Romero Brito was, it lends itself beautifully to fractions as well. Children mm -hmm. struggle with fractions, you know. So they could make those connections very easily with the halves and the quarters, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, simply you could, what you could do is even just taking a piece of paper, you know, I mean, you're just having that pattern on that and just maybe folding it into that half, you know. And when you're talking about the ratio and proportions and, and looking at what part is blue and so, and then like maybe fold into quarters or even go to eights and stuff, you know and then see what part is like, you know, and then opening it up and seeing where they can make the connections between the halves and the quarters and the eighths, you know? Mm -hmm. So children love it, they explore it. And it was like, you know, believe me, they were so engaged with this art form. And that's where I picked up that children love art so much. So I started bringing art in every area of the curriculum, you know? So mm -hmm. yeah, so beautifully lends itself. Yeah, I could just see, sorry, I'll, I'll stop after this, but I could just see, you know, how fractions can be quite boring for children yeah. and you think, you know, it's like done to death the same old way every year. Yeah. Whereas this yeah. way, you're just bringing it into their artwork suddenly, and it's very visual, it, it bringing it in in such a fun, engaging way where they're not gonna just say, oh, fractions and, you know, maybe turn off. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm bringing in your assessments as well. I mean, uh, that's another, topic maybe altogether to discuss about, but um, you know, you can see the progression starting from level one, you can take it as far as to level five as well, five, mm -hmm. six, yeah, you can stretch it. You know? mm -hmm. And um, because I was looking at the, our arts um, strands, you know, and as I said, it, we've got four disciplines of arts, like dance, drama, visual arts, and music, and uh, learning within each discipline um, is approached through four pedagogical strands. And that's developing the practical knowledge in arts, developing ideas in arts, communicating and interpreting in arts and understanding arts within the context. So all that is very well integrated. Into it. And then you mm -hmm. could talk about arts um, as well, like, you know, what uh, blue color tones do you see in this? So there's heaps, there's a lot of inquiry going on in that. It's mm -hmm. beautiful. I mean, I, I, I discovered that my team and my class were not seeing the children were all so engaged and they loved it. And in fact, they look forward. And then we started taking some student voice at what artists would they like to see? So they need to bring, you know, the names of some artists that they would like to explore. So it's beautiful. And mm -hmm. K. George, K. George is amazing. You know? It's beautiful. So mm -hmm. she does a lot of work within the Cook Island, you know, um, and her, um, as I said, her artwork is all inspired by textiles and fabrics and sea creatures and all nature. So I, it was a lot of learning for my own self, you know. I started, I, I fell in love with arts myself. To be very honest, I never liked the arts, but I really fell in love with arts. Ever since I've started exploring these artists myself, I've fallen, I'm integrating into so many curriculum areas. It's beautiful. Your class is not the same. I, our class was converted into an art gallery. It's beautiful. Yeah. So, yeah. so you just search for them online, kind of. Just search for them the online, yeah, maths and arts. And um, I mean, I, I, I'm happy to do more sessions on this and we'll talk to Robin and Marla and Tiff about this, but uh, I really want to do more sessions on this in the terms of like, how they bring in the assessments as well and how they create a lesson plan, a unit around that. Mm. So, yeah. mm. so. And uh, it also encourages um, 
students to bring out from their own culture, maybe after uh, seeing a few examples? Yeah. Beautiful. Any culture, you know, I mean, we've got Indian culture and uh, Cook Island, Samoan, Tiwaiwai, you know, you look at Tiwaiwai patterns, it's so beautiful from Cook Island. So, and Maori patterns, the Koru patterns, so much you can do with art. You can take art anywhere. You know. And if you leave it to kids, like kids are so creative, they're so creative, you know. You'll be surprised at the, what they can do. So, and these I'm talking about here, three, four, and five, six class. You know. So that particular artwork that I showed with heart was year three and four kids did it. They love it. And there's so much um, learning going on around the arts itself, the primary colors, you know, I mean, with Mondrian's art, he not only used the primary colors, but he used black, gray, and he likes to stick within the black, gray theme and white. So, yeah. So, any questions, Mala? I don't know from anyone, otherwise, can move on. Well, just thinking because okay. um, we're yeah. 11, we do logo design and and, yeah. um, and equations, you know, mm -hmm. of the different shapes and it would just be a really nice way of bringing all that in from the beginning, I think. Mm. What I suggest is if you go on to TKI um, and if you just type in K George unit plan on yeah. our that's uh, where you'll find uh, the entire unit plan on that. And uh, she starts with the fabric and um, fiber kind of a poster where she's inspired from, and then she leads into the whole unit. So there's a whole sequence of lesson plan. There's curriculum links um, as well. There are resources as well. I mean, it's very, very hands-on, you know, it's very hands you can like a workshoppy thing, you know. Mm. You know, I, I always keep in mind our children are 21st century kids, you know, they, they, we can't bore them by lectures and all that stuff. And it's becoming more and more where we are coming to more doing hands on stuff and more workshoppy things. They love it, you know. And so, Key George unit plan is on TKI. If you type it, you'll find it. You can start yeah. with that as well. Yeah. So, it's beautiful. Thanks. Thank you so much. Yeah, what you mentioned about. Uh, unit plan. Um, I think teachers would love an example of the yes, yes, how to take it from the basics and you know to level one, level yeah. two, and the cross curricular links. I might, I can, and Mala, maybe next session I'm happy to. In fact, we were talking, I was talking to Robin about assessments and um, unit plans, but uh, I thought I'll just start this topic now. And if if uh, need be, I mean, I'm happy to come back again and do a lesson plan, a unit plan, and um, assessments as well. We can talk about that. And build upon. Yeah, that would be great. I would love that. Yeah. I'm not sure if you guys have any Kanoi Kete Kanoi sessions, do you? At AMA? It'd be nice to have a little workshoppy thing. Do you have any Kanoi Kete Kanoi face to face sessions? We, we do. Um, we, we haven't been having the Saturday morning ones um, yeah. so much in the last few years because of the issues around COVID. And also we um, we want to keep the national focus of the the opportunity that the online gives us. So we're, we're tending, to, at the moment, we're still just having the big days like the HOD day and other ones like that. But we do, I think we still plan to try and have some more face-to-face -face like the shorter ones, but just not at the moment. Of course. Yes. But happy to come, and come back and build on this, you know, so. If there's nothing, I thought I'll just end the session with a little closing karakia for the session. That's okay, Nala? Yeah. yeah. So, ka whakairia te tapu, ki a waiatia ai te ara, ki a turu ki whakataha ai, ki a turu ki whakataha ai, huie taiki. Restrictions are moved aside, so the pathway is clear to return to everyday activities, to return to everyday activities, enriched, unified, and blessed. Thank you. Yeah. I've actually um, got my, I'm one of the curriculum leads working with the Ministry of Education. We are kind of new kids on the block, supporting um, uh, schools, leaders, and Kayako to bring the national curriculum to life at their school and make it more localized curriculum um, with ANZH and any other refresh that's happening. 
So if you need to get in touch, please feel free. That's my email. Just let us know and we can come and support you. So we, we have actually, we are about um, 11, 38 curriculum um, leads across the country, but 11 of us are based at Tamaki Makoro Mount Eden Mangapo office. Three of us cater for primary schools, uh, primary and intermediate. And then there's two curriculum leads within the secondary space and two within the easy space. And then four for Maori medium settings as well. So yeah, just shout if you need help with anything. Kia ora mala, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Uh, something came to me. mind when you were mentioning fractions and proportion and all that. Mm -hmm. um, Caroline Yoon from the University of Auckland, mm -hmm. um, she brought out a series of booklets on teaching um, different topics in maths. And although I, uh, it was, I think, for middle school, and uh, one of them was focused on ratio and proportion and using art. Um, yes. I think she chose uh, an artist and then um, brought out a series of booklets. I forget the name of the booklet. Mm -hmm. um, I will, um, we will see if we can include that yeah. um, yeah. in the thing later. Nice, and the yeah. other is that one of the um, other online sessions that we had, um, Jody Hunter and Bobby Hunter, Bobby Hunter. Yeah. Um, they presented on uh, Pacifica patterns, especially, mm. especially I think Cook Island and yeah. how they can be used in different aspects of um, yeah. the different strands of maths. Yeah. Yeah. That was, uh, yeah, the, those are the two things that came to mind when you yeah. were talking so about that. So here I've included like this TYY pattern where you can look at the, you know, in the two rectangles when you're finding the area and stuff. Mm. So you could find out, um, and there are and different investigating different ways of calculating the answers. You know, there's no one way to explore the answers. So looking at the area of the rectangle, or looking at uh, both the rectangles, inside square and the outside square, and then subtracting it. You know, so all it lends itself to. So you're right. And um, interestingly, uh, Bobby and Jody, I, I love their work. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the demic is really, it's good. Go on, Mahi, they're doing. And yeah, so as I said, you can bring in the patterns from different cultures, you know, all cultures have got beautiful artwork in them, a beautiful artist, you know. And um, I've been actually quite inspired by Kay George as well. As I said, she's from Rarotonga and she does beautiful artwork where she brings in nature into her work. And yeah, I think sky is the limit with this art and maths. You can go anywhere you want. You can take it wherever you want. And you can differentiate it. You can, there's a whole progression there. So it's beautiful. Just pick up an artist and Every so this was uh, our go to every term we looked at an art, every term, and then we integrated it across the curriculum. So, yeah, beautiful. And then maybe at the end, you can showcase a nice exhibition or something for parents. It's also a lot of Fano engagement and partnership with the parents, you know, where parents are invited. So, we used to have Fano Fridays where we used to invite parents to come in, you know, and celebrate learning every term. So, it's beautiful. Art is beautiful. So I hope. Are there any other questions from yeah. um, everyone? But everybody, um, thank you for putting your questions in the chat. Yeah, it's so beautiful. And yeah, uh, what Pip has mentioned, uh, integrating mathematics across the curriculum um, is really important. And once you get the it students is. engaged in maths through art, within mathematics, the, the across topic, and then across the curriculum, there are so many possibilities, isn't it? It is. As I said, you have a beautiful, it lends itself to even just having a little guided reading session, you know, when you're having, you pick up, I always, uh, for maths, I've always picked up uh, reading books, you know, that lent itself to maths concepts as well. And mm -hmm. these two books, as I said, you know, in fact, for this particular one, I remember kids getting up and becoming, you know, lines themselves and wiggly and woggly and, you know, and looking at the shapes and then taking all those cut out of the shapes, putting a monster and then creating those. So much engagement happening there, you know, so much engagement. Mm. It's beautiful. It's That's so engaging. interesting. Yeah. And um, yeah, it lends itself to all the curriculum you can bring in. So as I said, the sky is the limit, you know. And uh, I mean, I, there have been opportunities where I've actually brought in the artists like, uh, so our classrooms, I've always had, uh, I've always invited you know, authors, illustrators, and artists to come into the classroom and actually do the workshop hands-on. In fact, some of my kids' work was published on the magazine as a magazine cover page, some of the artwork. So 
That's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's how you, you know, making those community connections you have and bringing in, you know, education outside the classroom as well. And getting that uh, support from the community, from parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think somebody mentioned now in the chat, I'm just looking. <laughs> it's beautiful. You know, actually, I was in the same, sitting in the same boat. I have to go back to the chat. So I think it's, uh, yeah, somebody's mentioned that inspiring ideas, I will enjoy learning about art for myself. It's very important. As I said, I, one thing I never liked, I never liked art. I am more into maths and science, you know, but ever since I started enjoying art, I said, I need to take it to my classroom. I need to get to know art myself. And so I explored and now I do everything from the art perspective and I then integrate all the other things. So it's beautiful. What is that perfect square by Michael Hall all That's about? That's also a beautiful book about, um, it's more than the four equal sides of a square, you know. So if you read that book, it lends itself again to some art form it, that I'm talking about, uh, Mondrian's art. So it uh, mm -hmm. talks about color, texture, shapes, you know, all that stuff. But it's more than the four equal sides of a square. It's a beautiful book for little ease, you know, from year one to one and two, maybe. Yeah. So... Beautiful, and there are there are so many books out there, yeah. So bringing in your literacy, you know, English strand as well. Curriculum integrating it so well, and it lends you know these activities also lend itself beautiful to the oral language, the vocabulary, the topic related vocab that comes out of it. And mm -hmm. um, when children are talking to each other, communicating within the groups, a lot of oral language is coming out. So it builds on the oral language as well. So. And that's why I mean, art art has no ge geographical boundaries. You know, art is everywhere. You'll find maths and art anywhere, everywhere. You know, bring in food. I, I food connects people. You know, I always bought food. Kai children love Kai. So bringing in your fractions through Kai as well, which I think most of us always do it with pizza and apples and so yeah. So art can be anything. It can be music. It can be dance, drama, anything. So. Mm. But um, lovely, everybody has contributed so much to chat. Beautiful. Nice. Yeah, I'm happy to build on that. And um, maybe I'll have a word with Robin and Chip and Nala. And we can, build, we can build on this, yeah. And have a proper unit plan and assessments as well. And, um, you know, you were saying you have tried this with students in your mm -hmm. school uh, prior. Um, so what has been the response of other teachers and who are specialized in art and that sort so of thing? So I'm coming is... from primary perspective and I've really, I hope so, I've inspired my team actually. And they start, we all started looking at the artist, you know. So when we sit down for our team plannings and stuff, we always pick up an artist and see what we want to do. And in fact, um, they had the liberty, and my team also had the liberty of, um, you know, just taking student voice and seeing what art form or what artists they would want to explore, you know. As I said, we had so many ethnicities in the classroom, you name it, you know, and um, also acknowledging the culture and the you know, identity. I remember, um, his, um, I still remember his name, Pedro, <laughs> my little child, he's Brazilian, so that's why I bought in Romero Brito, and they loved it. So it's, it's taken well. It's taken well with the school. In fact, the old school started exploring at artists in art form. So, yeah, you can do so many things, you know, I mean, with art. And it's about also celebrating every term. We would have like an exhibition at the end. We would celebrate and children are talking about their work and how they're integrating maths into art. And, um, you know, that whole mathematical language also, you know, coming out. Mm. And um, excited to showcase their work as an exhibition you know and bringing in artists i always also used to bring in artists as well do more hands-on stuff this time mm. i remember yeah your covid happened and we did we couldn't go eotc so i actually organized an online art session with one of the artists in Hungary, and we had a mm. beautiful session online as well so yeah, what you're saying is right. You know, uh, through the art, um, students understand concepts through the words that they use in mathematics. So mm -hmm. developing that mathematical language and associating mm -hmm. one idea with uh, the word is so key. And mm -hmm. I totally agree with you on that. Yeah, 
there's so much topic words, so many, so much vocabulary coming out, you know, the oral language, you know, so rich. So this mathematical vocabulary, you know, building on the yeah. maths language and ketty. Yeah. So. Are there any more questions, anyone? Um, because we need a few minutes to finish as well. Um, thank you, everyone. I don't think that. Uh, just to say um, a huge thank you to, um, if we can finish up now, because I can't see any other questions. Um, a huge thank you to Renu Sika for taking the time and sharing this wonderful connection between art and mathematics and uh, the possibilities of cro cross curricular links that it offers. Um, honestly, before this, I didn't know about Brito or Mondrian. <laughs> now I'm, I'm going That's to add that to. Yeah, that is, uh, it's really um, very useful. And what you, the artwork from uh, Brito and Mondrian that you showed uh, really lends itself to level three and four of the curriculum. And there are huge possibilities, not just in level one and two, right across. Mm -hmm. And so thank you so much for um, uh, sharing this. And um, we, we have, uh, you've given us a lot to think about and how to create that unit plan. And certainly we will go into K. George's unit plan in the, uh, in the website and have a look at that.